All right, guys, we are getting this call started. I am live from the International Denver Airport with our team for FFL Rush Episode 2 Role Play Call. And we have some amazing guests on here today. I'm excited for you guys. I hope that from last call to this call, you guys have went home and practiced your scripts. You guys realize that you guys are starting a business. And if you're going to spend 30 minutes or an hour practicing your script and then get on the call and try to help a family out, you probably should quit. Okay, you're not taking this serious enough. And uh, it does take work uh, to get good at this, but the good news is it can be learned. I was the worst dialer on the planet, had zero sales background, but what I did have was grit. And I thought that if this guy can do it, I can do it. The only thing I have to change is myself, right? I have to keep practicing more, figure out my tone, figure out the psychology of the sale. And that's what these calls are for. And that's what these Q and A's are for. And that's how we practice together for. But for all the naysayers out there that say that, you know, internet leads are terrible and uh, you can't close an instant lead and there's no return on investment. I'm here to tell you, no, it's you. And so this call is going to be to show you that if we change our tonality, change our script, change the way we're doing these things, that we can turn it into money. It's just, we got to get it out of our head that it only takes an hour of, of uh, training. And then I'm going to be a millionaire and make 30,000 next month. No, you got to spend 40 hours of studying and watching videos and practicing stuff out loud. And that's really not a big commitment. If you really think about it, like you can go to college for what, 1,400 days, four years of your life. Okay. Four years of your life, spend a hundred grand to get out and make 80,000. Or you can spend seven days, really 40 hours practicing your scripts, getting good at this business and learn how to make 30,000 in one week. You can you totally can. So it's really up to us as individuals how committed we want to be. But I want to bring on right now, Mr. David. Can you unmute yourself? Hey, dude. How you doing, brother? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries, man. All right. So I know you took December <clears throat> off with your family, but I want to hear for the people that say that internet life leads don't work. How much were you spending a week on internet instant life leads? Between um, between six hundred to a thousand bucks, six hundred thousand bucks. So we're spending anywhere from correct me if I'm wrong about two grand to four grand a month, correct? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. And then what was your was your uh, submit? What was your well, how much were you submitting a month with those leads? Between thirty five to forty thousand. Thirty five to forty thousand guys. So that's let's do the math here. If I'm spending three thousand dollars and turning into average of thirty thousand dollars, he's making a thousand percent ROI with internet life leads. Now these the ones you were buying were eleven dollars, right? Yeah, and then when you stack them with like the discounts that we get too, like sometimes they were cheaper, sometimes they come up to be like eight or nine bucks. Because you got the work spots, right? Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Okay, so <laughs> Guys out there, they're going, these leads are terrible. It's only about mortgage protection leads. It's only about the A's mortgage protection. It's only the final expense. I mean, everyone has their, their lead that they love, right? But here's the thing. It's in our heads. This job is all perspective. And if we say this lead sucks, guess what? It becomes crappy. It does. But if we say it's a good lead, it becomes good. I remember when I first started here 10 years ago, we were in this county and everyone said, hey, Maricopa County, the city's terrible. And everyone liked to go out of town because those leads were the good leads. Mentally, as a company, we all thought that until this new guy came into town. We could only write 2,000, 3,000. This new guy, Phil, came into town in Maricopa County. No one told him the leads were bad. And he started writing six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 a week in Maricopa. Guess what? Now, because he proved it was possible, People started writing 8,000 a week. It's all a mental game. When I came into the business, everyone said, hey, you can't do telemarketing. You can't do telesales. It's not going to work. Mentally, people tried it. They failed at it. Then what happened? I said, you can do it. What happened? People started to do it. So this is just proof in the pudding that everything's a mental game. If you say that this, this can work, it will work. If you say it can't work, it won't work. But David, I want to let you give the floor here. I want you to kind of go into a little bit of how your script works, what you're saying, because uh, this is kind of the role play call and I'll be the client and uh, get an idea of kind of what you do uh, to get those closes. 
the first the first thing that I'm going to say and 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 dude, I'm going to be like completely transparent with you. Um, coming from my old IMO, like one of the biggest things that like they taught us and told us to do was like keep it relational. Um, you know, build build that rapport with them, all this other stuff, and it worked. Like I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna sugarcoat it or lie. Like it worked tremendously. But the biggest issue that I've seen is like scheduling an appointment would take me 30 minutes. Running an appointment would take me two hours, you know, so I could close them all day long, but I was spending way too much time. When I came over here to FFL and going through the boot camp, um, you know, that Grady offers, like one of the biggest take, the biggest thing that I took away from it was, you know, this is a transactional business. And, you know, a friend of mine, you know, said, and I, I kind of stuck to it. You know, insurance isn't a logical purchase. Nobody goes out and buys insurance because it's a good deal. Um, insurance is all about an emotional purchase. You know, so when you can tug on those emotional strings, that's that's when you get them. You know, so looking at it from having it be kind of like sy systematic and you know running running at it at that approach, um, I'm fast. Like like I don't. I don't tell anybody that I'm a salesman. I don't lead them on to make them think that I'm trying to come to them and sell them four or five different policies or anything like that. Uh, when I'm booking an appointment, I'm on the phone less than, less than five minutes. I let them know that I'm the, I'm the local field underwriter who's been assigned to their case. Um, what my job is, is just to be able to present them with the options. And I don't even give them a choice. I don't ask them, hey, when does this work for you? I tell, you know, I tell them. Um, look, I'm going to be in your, I'm going to be in your area or I'm running, I'm running an appointment to show you this uh, tomorrow at between nine and 10 o'clock. There's 930 is 930. Good for you. And I let them choose between, between nine and 10 or nine and 11. You know, that's, that's as far as when I'm booking appointments. And, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned is people love to be told what to do. If you give them, if you give them endless amounts of options, you know, say, Hey, look, I'm going to be in your area Thursday or Friday or Saturday. You know, they don't, they're not, number one, they're not going to take you serious because they're, that's a clue right away that you're a salesman just trying to, just trying to accommodate them and get in the door. Um, number, number two, it's too many options. You know, I, I don't know if any of you all have ever been to the Cheesecake Factory. Ryan, it's right down the street from Denver. You should go there. Yeah, um, yeah, right. Dude, that's my stopping grounds. That's where I lived for a long time. Um, but well, like when you open up their menu, it's 20 pages, like like Cheesecake Factory's menu is 20 pages. You know, so when you have all those options there, you get confused. And another thing that a mentor friend of mine said that I've taken to heart is a confused mind does nothing, which is so true. So when you limit the options down to like, hey, nine or nine thirty, pick one, you know, everybody all the time, they, nine thirty works or nine o'clock works. Great. Awesome. I'll see you then. Um, and that's the extent of it. Like I don't, and, and I probably do things ass backwards, but I don't get their medical information. We've got the underwriting genie. So there's no reason to like, I mean, they respond within two to three minutes. So I don't get their medical information. I don't get anything. You know, I get all of that once, once we're in the meeting. And then same thing when I'm running an appointment, I go in there, we go, we do a quick spiel on like, all right, great. You know, whether it's mortgage protection, whether it's life, whether, you know, whatever their need is. All right, so this is your needs. These are the options that, that we have for you. Great. Which one, which one are we going with today? My job is to go ahead and get this submitted to see if you're approved. That way we that way we know we're, what we're working with here. I need your so first let, name. Let, let me ask you a couple of quick questions, David. So when you're running those three thousand dollars turn to average thirty thousand AP, are you doing that face to face or are you doing that remote? It's kind of a mix. Um, you know, I I was doing all virtual for for a while and then i went to in home i like being in home but it's a i mean i'm gonna be real honest like i hate wasting the gas you know i hate driving an hour two hour places so i switch it back to virtual um well let, you know let's or, do or some do let's, let's do some let's do some quick role play so people can uh write down some word tracks and guys i want you to realize that the words don't matter there's lots of ways to do this but 80 percent of it's tonality and confidence and that's just going to come with practice and yeah. you can practice for free with your friends and family. And that's what this calls for. It doesn't cost you any money beyond this stuff. And we're going to hear from some of you new people too uh, today um, and, and give you some tips on uh, how we can, how you're sounding and what we can change. So I want you to listen to uh, David's confidence in this, but um, you're setting appointments uh, for either Zoom, telesales or face-to-face. -face. 
let's hear your your set appointment script and I'll role play with you for a little bit. This first one, I'm going to go a little easy on you so we can get through the whole entire thing. And then I'm going to go hard in the paint. You can, we'll see how he handles some objections. Okay. You ready for this, David? Let's do it. And I appreciate you being on here, buddy. Thank you so much, man. So uh, everyone's excited to hear what you have to say. All right, cool. So uh, ring, ring, hello. Uh, hey, Ryan, this is David. I'm just uh, getting back to you with the information you requested over the mortgage protection. Um, I still have your address here is 121 Woodingham. That's correct? That's correct. Okay. I'm the local field underwriter who's been assigned to your case. Um, I am going to be out there tomorrow between 9 and 11 to drop off this information that you requested. Uh, what time works better for you, 9 or 9.30? Um, I can do a 9.30. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just confirm a little bit of information here. I do have 121 Woodingham Drive, zip code, yada, yada, yada. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, last name is Reynolds. That's correct. First name is Ryan. You got it. Okay, and what color is your front door? Uh, it is blue. Okay, all right, so be expecting me between nine and 9.30 tomorrow. Give me a couple minutes of leeway if in case I'm running late due to traffic and I will see you then. All right, cool. So let's do it one more time. Now I'm gonna do some rebuttals. And I think that was excellent. Nice, short, simple, to the point, confident tone, uh, in control of the conversation, guys. He's not needy. There's no uh, quivering in his voice. He's not being extra friendly. He's just a guy that's calling someone up that realizes they asked for his help, and he's telling them how to get it. So great, great job there, David. All right, cool. So let's go a little hard in the paint here, see how you have some objections. Ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is this is David. Uh, Whoa, whoo, give me, a, give me a second, sorry. <laughs> Hi Ryan, this is, uh, this is David. I'm just getting back to you about the information you requested for the mortgage protection. I have here that your address is 121 Woodingham. Is that correct? That's correct. Hey, this is a bad time, David, to talk. Can you give me a call back later? No, no problem at all. This will only take a second. Um, I do have here that your mortgage amount is 200,000. Is that correct? That's correct. Hey David, how much is this going to cost actually? That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, not a, not a problem at all. We'll get all that here in just a, just a second. Um, I'm the local field underwriter who's been assigned to your case. Um, I want to get this information out to you so that way you can get the cost and everything associated to it. I'm not a salesman. Like I said, I am the local field underwriter. I'll be out in your area tomorrow between 9 and 11 to drop this information off to you. Um, what, what time works better, 9 or 9.30? Uh, actually, I work during the day, so those won't work for me. You work during the day? Not a problem. I can go ahead. Let's see here. Looking at my schedule. Uh, Saturday morning, I will also be out there between 9 and 9.30. What time works better? 9.30 or 9 o'clock? Uh, Saturdays, I got a uh, Saturday morning. I got to uh, do the soccer with the kids. Not a problem. I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be out in that area anyway. So why don't I stop by? I'm a huge soccer fan myself. We'll go ahead and cheer on the kids together while I drop this information off to you. <laughs> you'd actually go to a soccer game okay <laughs> you wouldn't yeah, maybe go, go to their house why wouldn't i go to their soccer game uh, uh, you know maybe they have the checkbook with them i don't know that's pretty that's pretty bold there okay need, cool i don't need a but checkbook. It, but, <laughs> um okay cool yeah uh bring some oranges for the kids we'll, we'll see you at 9 30 <laughs> yeah sounds good what what flavor capri sun do they like <laughs> the strawberry I don't even have strawberry right. now. <laughs> I'll go ahead and now, I'll if, go ahead and get it. I'll see you out there. Now, now, if you were doing a remote sale, it'd be basically the same exact script. You're just setting up a time for a phone call or a Zoom call, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Now let's hear the presentation. Now let's imagine it's a uh, a, a, a telemarketing sale. Uh, have you ever done any telesales, or has it just been Zooms? No, telesales too. Okay, cool. So let's try a telesales one because I think most people in this call are trying to do remote. So we'll kind of go that route. But again, instead of saying I'm going to drop the information at your house, you're saying expecting a phone call. So not not too much variance there, guys. And and uh, I, the one thing I liked about David's is that, you know, less is more. You know, I think when you're, when you're short and to the point, it's a confidence. When you give it a lot of breath, you're saying too much. It's almost kind of like needy and salesy, right? So a lot of the scripts that we have, they can be a little lengthy. Um, but that stuff's there for you to utilize and use what you like and take away what you don't. If you don't like saying something, cut it out. I think shorter and sweeter is actually better. 
And I think that kind of came across when we were listening to David there that it came off a lot more confident. All right, brother, let's do a presentation real quick, okay? So uh, let's do a phone one. I answer the call and uh, it's 9.30. You didn't get no-showed because you sent a, a reminder text message out to them. <laughs> okay, all right. So hello, this is uh, Ryan. Hey, Ryan, this is uh, Dave. This is David Drumgool. I'm calling you like I told you would here at 930. Um, I just want to go ahead and go over some of these some of these options with you here that we briefly discussed about and you requested. Uh, before I can do so, though, I got to get a little bit of information from you. Um, so let me just ask you real quick. Uh, what is your height and weight? I am five, eight and uh, 180 pounds. Awesome. OK. And your date of birth? Uh, 621 81. Great. And then any history of heart attack, cancer, or stroke, anything like that? I know you're young, so probably not. Uh, not, no, not yet. Okay. Well, hopefully not ever. Let's keep that. Let's keep that on the forefront. Okay. And then, uh, last question I have for you is any, any nicotine products? Uh, yes. Yes. Vaporizer. Okay. Vaporizer. There we go. I do one too. They're fun. All right. Awesome. Ryan, I just needed to confirm some of that. So that way I can make sure that the information I do have is valid and accurate. Um, I also wanted to confirm here for you. I do have your mortgage set at 200,000, correct? That's correct. Okay. How much equity is in the house right now? Um, we just purchased it. So um, I think we put 20K down. So probably about 20,000. Okay. So it's not not too bad there. All right. And then also, I just, my last question is, you know, if something was to happen, are you looking to cover the entire mortgage or are we just looking to cover partial couple of the payments? What are, what are we really aiming here? Uh, I was just kind of looking into it. They said, I thought I had to fill this form out and send it back to you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and that's what my job here as a field underwriter is, is all we're doing is looking, looking into it to make sure number one, that you can get approved, but number, number two, it's something that, something that fits for you. Um, you know, let me, let me ask you something to Ryan, are you the sole provider? Uh, no, me and my wife work. You and your wife split. And I'm assuming you both split that mortgage payment. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I pay the mortgage. She pays the uh, utilities and stuff. Okay. Wonderful. So, and if something was to, if something was to happen to you, uh, let's say, you know, next week you're driving down the road, you go ahead and see a moose cause you're, or an elk cause you're in Colorado right now. And then you slide off the road and pass away. Is your wife going to be able to cover that entire mortgage payment? I mean, she could, but you know, it'd be, it'd be, a, be a little tighter. It'd probably be a stretch. Okay. Well, you're pretty young. So most of these, most, most of these programs that I went ahead and checked into, they, they're actually pretty feasible. Um, so I want to run over a few different options for you real quick. First, first thing I want to run over to you is what it would look like to cover the entire mortgage, um, which I think would be your best option, especially I'm sure you, you've got little kids too, right? Yeah. And let's do, let's actually switch gears here because let's, let's imagine we're dying the instant leads, which is going to be a life insurance lead. So let's see how you'd handle that. So Let's back up a little bit, and I want to hear the, the life insurance side of how you would handle instant lead. You know, the $11 instant leads, um, oh, yeah. which is where a lot of people have access to versus the uh, mortgage protection. So let me see sure. how you handle that one. But the one thing I we'll, – we'll do it again real quick. The one thing I liked about it is you it's interesting. You go right into it. You know, there's no major opening, uh, very um, um, assertive and assumptive that we're getting a plan today. You know, there's not really a major opening there, which is kind of interesting, but it still comes off very simplistic and um, confident. So I think that's great. So interesting, interesting approach, but it's working guys, thousand percent ROI. So take lots of different ways to do it, but the ways that work are the ones you want to copy. And if you like David's style, here's a good way. We'll have this recorded so you guys can write it down too, but love it. All right, let's try it one more time. Let's do with internet, internet life lead, which I think a majority of people on the call are probably working with right now. Yeah, these uh, honestly, dude, these are, I found them to be kind of lay downs. I mean, because if somebody's already requested life insurance to begin with, it's just a matter of figure. Well, let's run through it. I'll show you. All right. So, yeah. Hello. 
Hey, Ryan, this is David, the local field underwriter, uh, getting back to you uh, like we scheduled for here at 930. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of these options that I that I did find for you, but I do have a few quick questions and I'm going to we're just going to skip all the health stuff, assuming I already got that. Uh, great. Ryan, a um, couple questions that I do have for you is number one, how much coverage were we looking for? Um, you know what? I didn't really think about it too much. I just kind of saw the ad and, you know, thought I'd just kind of look into it. Uh, do you currently have any life insurance? I have a work policy, and I'm, so I'm pretty much covered, so I'm not really sure if I need it. Okay, so you have a work, work policy that you've paid into for a little bit. Um, any special perks or plans with that work policy? Um, I'm not really sure actually how it all works. I just know I have it. It comes out of my paycheck. Okay. Yeah, most of uh, most employment policies, it's just a basic life and in, life insurance. So I do want to definitely show you a couple different options that we have here um, that would work better, better for you. Um, let me do ask you this, though, if something was to happen to you tomorrow, OK, is that policy going to cover your family for for the next 10 years? Uh, no, probably it, not. I think I think it's maybe not. like. Yeah, like maybe twice my salary, if I remember twice correctly. Your, twice your salary. So your family would only be set up for like about two years then, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, a couple of plans that I have picked out that I want to that I want to go over with you, they do cover significantly more. You're, you have living benefits that are attached to them as well. Um, and then aside from that, if they're still going to be valid if something happens at work, because uh, in my experience, what I've seen is most employment policies, the day that you walk out the door, get fired, canned, whatever, uh, those policies usually terminate. Um, you usually do have an option to keep them, but it's a really high premium. Um, so I want to show you a couple a couple different policies here. But first, I, I need to know, um, we got to figure out what kind of coverage base we're, we're, we're looking at here. Um, roughly right about how much is your salary per year? Uh, right now, I'm earning about uh, 100000 a year. About a, about a hundred K. So we want to look at something that's got, I would say close to about a million, about a million in coverage. So that way your family's set up for the next 10 years. Right. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that's a good number? Yeah. So that if something happened to me, that income replaced for 10 years, is that what you're saying? Right. Exactly. Um, how young is your youngest child? Uh, he's 14. 14. So we might not want to look at something that covers out for the next 10 years. If your youngest is 14, we might want to look at something that covers maybe for about five or six years. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I guess we'll just kind of see where the prices fall and kind of go from there. I mean, like I said, I was just kind of looking into it today and kind of wanted to see what it was all about. Yeah, absolutely here. Um, well, I did go ahead and pull a couple, a couple things together and I want to go over with them, go over them with you. Um, first thing I want to highlight out of the policies that I picked uh, to go over is they do have living benefits, uh, meaning that they do have a chronic critical or terminal illness rider attached to them. Uh, and a lot of that's kind of, you know, just kind of briefly go over what that means is if you do get, let's say you get a terminal illness, you can have access to the life insurance policy before you pass away. Um, that's the first and foremost thing, you know, because we don't ever plan to die. Um, but, you know, sickness does happen a little bit more frequently. Um, and I know with a basic work policy, they're not going to have those kind of benefits attached to them. So that's a major, major benefit right, right there as well. Um, the second thing that I pulled out is you're already paying into the life insurance policy that you have, but you're probably not going to get anything in return once you, once you leave. So the one of the policies that I that I picked out for you has what we call as return of premium um, attached to it. What that return of premium means is that the end, once we pick the term length, probably 10 years, maybe 15, um, at the end of that 10 years, you'll get the majority of those premiums you paid into it. It's kind of like car insurance. Think of it this way. You got to have car insurance anyways. You're paying into it every month, you know, but when you go to switch car insurance policies, do they give you anything back? Uh, I wish. <laughs> right. I, really I, I wish too. Well, and that's the benefit to this policy here is, you know, and once as long as granted nothing happened and God forbid, we don't want anything to happen. Uh, but at the end of that term, at the end of that term length, you know, they'll go ahead and write you a check for what you paid into it um, off of this policy that I put into it, which is a huge benefit. Uh, we also use, you know, it's completely tax free that comes back as well. So that's a that's another major benefit. 
I'm just going to go ahead and run right into that. Uh, the policy that I looked at, I know you said your your son is about four, your youngest is about 14. So I went ahead and looked at something that's going to cover us for the for the next 10 uh, for the next 15 years. Uh, the policy amount, let's uh, America caps out at 250. So we'll say 250 thousand um, is the one that I is one that I chose. So 250 thousand. So it'll cover any immediate expenses and everything, and it's going to run you roughly about 275 dollars a month. Um, the second policy is not a return of premium that I have here. It's just going to be a basic life insurance policy. Again, two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, which is going to cover you for a little little bit there, and that one's going to run you about one hundred and fifty. Uh, which one did we want to go with today? Okay, so I guess I'm confused. So the first one was the return. So, so what happened at ten years? I thought I was covering myself for a million dollars. Well, we can definitely get you covered up that much, but we're going to have to go ahead and stack a couple policies. The other thing is, too, what I try to stay away from is any medical underwriting. Um, so we go with a simplified issue. Uh, and what we can do is if we want to stay with that simplified issue, not worry about having to get any doctors or anything involved, we fill this out. We'll stack a couple different different policies. Uh, let me ask you, is that return of premium something that you're interested in or would you rather just go with a basic policy? Um. I and what was the cost again for the return of premium versus just the, the basic? Return of premium is going to give you roughly right around 270 a month. 270 a month. And then what was the, month the one? Uh, the basic what one, was is other? You, one is going to run you a little bit over 150 a month. Wow. I didn't know it was going to be this expensive. Um, can, I, can I have some time to think on this? Yeah, that's perfect. I tell you what, well, the carriers usually take anywhere from anywhere from six to 10 days to think on it and decide as well. So what my job is as the underwriter, uh, you know, before we move forward, we'll go ahead and submit this application. Once we submit it to them, that'll give you kind of time to think about it as well. And it'll give them time to think about it. And once we find out if you're approved or not, we can go ahead and revisit, revisit it and move forward from there. How does that sound? Yeah, I just... Um... And I'm going to go hard on you because everyone wants me to hear you go hard. <laughs> but you're doing awesome. Um, I hope you guys are taking some notes. I, I love the confidence. It's tone out. It's great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just I just need to, you know, I, I, you would normally have your wife, his wife on the phone with you, right? When you're presenting, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. Yep. So let's just let's imagine the wife is here too. Um all right, cool. So, you know, I just uh, I just kind of di didn't want to make a decision again, like, you know, kind of like sign up for something right now. I kind of was just looking into it. And then uh, is there any way I could get your number and call you back? Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, like I said, I know I told you the carriers take a couple days to think about it. Um, I know we've been on the phone here for a few minutes. My throat's feeling kind of parched. Let me do this. I'm going to mute out for a second. I'm going to go grab a drink of water. You and the missus talk, talk about it. And then let me, let me pop back in. Give me about, give me about five, five, actually fridge is a little bit farther away. I think I'm going to grab a soda for the carbonation. Uh, give me about five, 10 minutes. I'll be right back. All right. I like it. Not taking no for an answer. Okay. So again, you're just like, look, uh, again, to re reiterate, they get back on the phone. We kind of discussed it. We're not really sure on our budget. Um, you know, so I, I, I like the return of premium, but I just not sure if I, if we can squeeze out $270 a month, you know, uh, out of our budget here. So, yeah, well, I tell you, let's, let's, let's do this. I mean, cause I, what I did is when I priced it, I went all the way to the max. Um, and that's the kind of guy that I am. I like going all the way to the max and working my, working my way down. Um, from there. So let's, let me ask you this, Ryan, what is, when, when you were looking at this, you probably had a figure in mind. You probably already had something in mind, like, yeah, that would work if it was there. What was that number that you were, that you were thinking of? Probably like 150 is the max so right we could probably afford. Right, right around that, right around that 150. No problem. Let me, give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and crunch some numbers real quick. Let's see, let's see where this pans out right about that. Da, 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 fast forward. Great. All right, Ryan, turns out I, I was able to go ahead and crunch some numbers real quick. 
I got that one around that 150. It's a little bit more. Don't shoot me. I'm sorry. Um, but it comes out to 168. So it's an extra $18. It's basically a meal at McDonald's. Um, and what that's going to do is going to get you 175,000 worth of worth of coverage. And you still have access to all those benefits plus that return of premium. So once this ends, once that term term is up, you still get the 100% back. It's on a product called a CBO 120, 125. Uh, so it's a great product. Um, let me go ahead and start with what is your middle initial? Uh, J. J. And your date of birth. I know you're filling out the app. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure that I, I didn't know I had to get my bank account information out here, David. Like, wh why do you need that? Oh, th see, this is a legal binding contract. Okay. If everything's null and void until we have all that, we've got to have it completely, completely filled out. Don't worry. They're completely secure, secured servers. Um, so that way we can actually get things initiated. Typically what would happen is if I was meeting with you face to face, I would just collect a voided, a voided check from you. But since we are doing this on a telesales basis, um, I got to go ahead and input it into the computer. You said your routing number was what again? I like it. Not giving me breath. Okay. Excellent. All right, cool. So, um, if, what if, they, if they fought you some more on it, anything else you'd add to that? You know, I just don't really know who you are. I'm just not really feeling comfortable, you know, giving out, you know, my banking information to someone, you know, I don't, you know, just, it's kind of weird, you know, I mean. Typically what I'll do is I'll go up to three rebuttals. If they, you know, if they fight me on, if they fight me on it three, three times, I'm not going to sit here and waste, waste my breath anymore. You know, I'll, I'll let them know. I'll tell them, like, hey, look, I'm a licensed, you know, I'm a licensed agent. You can, you know, look me up on the insurance registry, da, 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 uh, this and that. I tell you what, I tell you what I will do is I'll go ahead and send you, send you an email, call me, you know, and you can call me back at your convenience. And I'm going to be honest, like anytime I have to do that, I know they're not going to call me back. You know, it, it'd be yeah. it's like seeing a blue moon if, if that happens. So I do my best I, it, to just roll right through it. And I think that the thing that was really good that stood out was that you didn't give it a lot of breath. You weren't making it, you know, needy or just like, okay, this is a dumb objection. I'm just going to tell you why we need it and we're going to move forward. So what's that routing number again? And I think that was, came off very confident. So I, I really love that, the way you handled that first one. Um, so good job on that. Um, and then let's say you close it down. Say they're approved. And then how do you, how do you finish your call? Um, once they're, once they're approved, I, I, I don't, again, this is going to be unorthodox. I don't let anybody know that they're approved while, while we're on the phone. I always close it down with awesome. I've go, I've gone ahead and submitted the application. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to wait to hear back from the carrier. It can take as, it can take as little as 24 hours. It can take up to seven to 10 business days. Once I do find out that you're approved, we will, I'll go ahead and reach back out to you and let you know. Um, do you have any question, any questions for me? Nope. Uh, nope. Yeah. And then I said, great, not a problem. Here's my info. Here's my information. Give me a call if you do have any questions. Otherwise, I'll be letting you know shortly whether uh, I'll be letting you know shortly what the next steps are. And when I do that, I just call them, hey, everything's everything's been approved. Great. Got the draft date all set. Got the, everything's all set. We're ready to roll. I love it. Less is more. Okay, guys, this this is a different than like a normal call. We're going to open up for questions. I thought you killed it, David. I love how simplistic it is. It When we're talking about less is more, it comes off more, right? I mean, that's my opinion. Um, anyone have some questions for David and how his approach works? It's really not even a, really not a even big a, opening. You know, nothing there. So I thought it was excellent. But um, ask some questions, guys. We're here. David's here for us. Um, any questions you guys have, we'll let the floor be open here. All right, hey, I have a quick hey, okay. Go ahead. Uh, this is Corey. This is Corey. Um, my question is, when it comes to uh, uh, mortgage protection, um, would you ask to see if they're paying down their mortgage extra? Let's say they're paying five hundred dollars extra a month. To pay the mortgage down, uh, would it be safe to reallocate some of that money, that two hundred fifty dollars, towards uh, the insurance plan that you offered? Does that make sense? I hope so. 
All right. So are you, so what you're saying, are you asking if I'm going in and asking how much additional they're paying on their mortgage? Yeah. I mean, I, I just want to know if it's, if it's okay to do that. Let's say if they're paying an extra $500 a month to pay down their mortgage, the, uh, the insurance plan is $250 and it's pretty much they're getting their return of premium back. It's kind of like a savings account anyways. Yeah. So allocate so that money towards the plan. Right. I, yes, I will ask that in, in a lot of different scenarios when I, when I was running mortgage protection leads. Um, and if they were doing that, I would do some quick calculations. I would spend more time with them, but typically there are a lot higher policies. Um, cause I would basically show them how to use the return of premium to pay off their, pay off their mortgage early, uh, you know, okay. anywhere from 10 to 15 years early. But I mean, that involves a lot more math as well. I'll be honest. And I'm not a math guy. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I failed pre-algebra three times, man. So Matt numbers is not my thing. Um, but there are, there's these wonderful mortgage calculators and everything out there that'll show that as soon as you put it in, it'll show you what it is. And you can easily do it that way. But I wouldn't lead with that. You know, first thing I would do is I would, you know, I would show them the options that I have, show them the options that I that I came up with for them. And if they spark their interest, if they, you know, if they were the ones who said, hey, I'm paying an additional $500 a month, you know, what would it look like to do this? Or you can also position it into like an IULE, which I know this is getting kind of advanced there. Um, and show them how they can build, you know, build more money, build a cash value to pay off their mortgage early, which, uh, you know, we ran stuff like that in our DFL program or debt-free life programs where I came from. Um, but the biggest thing is like, keep it simple. Like don't focus, because when you start trying to get into the higher numbers, you start trying to get into all this other stuff, you're going to confuse the heck out of your mind and you're not going to know where to go. And especially if you haven't been doing it for a long time or any amount of time or anything like that, you're going to lose confidence real quick. And that is the biggest thing. Like I will tell anybody on here, the moment that you don't have confidence in yourself and what you're selling and what you're offering, the client's not going to have any confidence in you either. And they're going to give you, I mean, they're just going to end up saying, yeah, we're going to need time to think about it. You know, but when you're, when you have a confident approach, and you're not wasting any time, you're going right in like, hey, I got a job to do here, you know, making it seem like you're in a hurry, because you've got 20 other people to see in the next two next two days. And it doesn't matter to me whether you say yes or no, I'm just here to do my job. If you want to let me do my job, I'm going to get in here, we're going to sign the app, we're going to fill it out. Great. I'm going to be gone, go to the next person to do the exact same thing with. If you're not, stop wasting my time. Let's go. I love it. And less is more simplicity. Uh, good question, Corey. Yeah. Um, you know, you can obviously get into that advanced stuff and utilize some of that stuff. But, you know, as I'm listening to you, David, I'm like, I think I say too much. <laughs> I think I need to say less. Dude, so, Dude I'm, I'm telling I I was the king. You can ask Jamie, Jamie and Chase. Like I, I still my very first sale that I ever that I ever had. I spent like four and a half hours with them. Great people. Look, I had dinner with them. I still have dinner with them because they're awesome people. You know, it, you know, I built a ton of rapport, but the problem is when you build so much rapport with people, it's easy for them to tell you no. Simple, simple as that, you know, because now you, now you enter into that friend stage and they're like, yeah, well, we're, we're friends. I can't really do this, you know, but when you come in there acting, I hate to say it, but kind of like a drill sergeant and you're telling them, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. This is what it's going to cover. You know, press here, sign hard three copies, you know, kind of, kind of deal. They, they do, they do it and they just go with it because people love to be told what to do. Yep. And it, it's a lot more confident approach too, because it's not needy. You're not trying to over convince or oversell it. Right. You're just like, Hey, everyone, everyone, the nice thing about your approach is it's like, it almost feels like everyone gets it. Like there's no hesitation. You're very assumptive. It's like, uh, do you want the one? And when you, the way you said this one's 270, this one's 150. You said it like it's so standard, like everyone gets it for 270. And you probably sell a lot of big premiums that way, I'm guessing, correct? I do. I do. And that's the other thing, too. Uh, I mean, exactly what you do when you create that mindset. Everybody wants to get what everybody else is getting. That's why iPhones are so popular. Everybody has one. So if everybody's getting a policy at, you know, 250, 350 bucks, you know, what's an extra 253, 350 bucks? Also, you know, people are driven by money. So when you let them know and kind of do the quick math and calculations for them, like, yeah, so we're going to do this over the net. Your mortgage is 30 years. We'll do, we'll set it up for 25 years. Looks like you're going to get, 
uh, roughly about 90,000 back. So at the end, you know, that goes cha-ching in their head. Like, so once this is all done, they're going to write me a check for, for, yeah, you'll get, you'll get a check back. Barring nothing, barring nothing happened. You didn't, you know, didn't have to use the policy for anything. Yeah. It's kind of their way of saying, Hey, thanks for letting us borrow your money for a little bit. And I love it. All right, guys, any more questions for David? That's a good question. Let's ask some good ones here. Any rebuttals you guys are running into that you want to see how he'd overcome? All this stuff is good stuff. We're all here to learn together. Hey, David. Yep. Hey, so let me ask you, are you pretty much setting appointments for everything, the um, the uh, term, the insurance products and the mortgage protection, or are you doing any call to closes? No, I, I, I've been just running like the instant, the instant life. So I did where, where I came from, it was all mortgage protection. To be honest with you, I was burnt out on mortgage protection. So I just focused strictly on insurance and or strictly on life insurance, which like I said, I found them to be pretty easy. I mean, at 11 bucks, a, at 11 bucks a pop, like, I mean, that's pretty freaking cheap. Cause I was paying, you know, $46 for, for a lead before. So I just said, all right, more the barrier. You know, people, I mean, don't get me wrong. Not every single one of them said yes. Not every single one of them was like, oh my God, I'm so glad that you called. I've been waiting for you. No, you do got to sit there and talk to them and, you know, know your, know your script or know your rebuttal. But for me, I was like, look, I could dial a hell of a lot more now since they're a lot cheaper. So I'm just going to keep dialing and keep booking appointments and run 20 to 25, appoint, 20, 25 to 30 appointments a week. Um, so you're, so just a uh, follow-up question. So you're dialing the you're dialing your eleven dollar leads, and you're you're calling them back at a later date to go over the product. Yeah, I book an I, I book an appointment. I, I book an appointment for for a future date. Yeah, I, I have not done the the one call close. Okay. I have I have done those before. Uh -huh. Where like I've kind of walked into it and like yeah let's just do everything everything right yeah. now but that is that's not my strategy. Yeah, uh, and it's it kind of I, I've been practicing the calls to close, but like I was in that thing where with the mortgage protection somewhere else, and then you set up an appointment and call back. Right. It, it just feels more comfortable that way. <laughs> so yeah, it's just well, okay. Well, okay. Lots of ways to do it, guys. You got to kind of practice all of them. Now, the one thing that I've noticed, especially for newbies, is that when they're trying to set appointments on the instant internet life leads, they tend to get a lot of no-shows. So I guess the question I'd like to ask you, David, is if you are setting appointments for these internet life leads, I know face-to-face -face you can knock on the door, and that's the advantage, right? Is in case they right. forget they're there, you're like, hey, let's get it done. But if you were doing a remote sale setting appointments and, you know, whether it's telesailers or Zoom, what are some things you, you think you that stand out to why you're not getting as many no-shows? If I'm doing, so if I'm doing a Zoom, like I've got a different strategy for all of it. If I'm strictly doing Zoom, like I'll ask them, I'll say, all right, I need you to go to your calendar, put it in, you know, my calendar's on my phone. Great. Pull it up while we're on the phone. I need you to put that in there. Then I need you to go to your reminder setting and put it in there. Cause mind you, I do, I am working with about 12 other people on this day. So I need to make sure you're going to be there. And I'll ask them five or six times. You are going to be there. Correct. I'm not going to log, I'm not going to log into this and find an, find an empty, empty screen. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll just confirm it that way. Same thing when I'm on, when I'm on the phone, the other thing that I'll do is if they do no show me, um, whether it be zoom or telesales, I will call them 12 to 13 different times from different telephone numbers until they pick up, you know, cause sorry, <laughs> if your phone's, if your phone's ringing off the hook and then when they do pick up, I don't even act like nothing happened. I'll be like, Hey, this is David. Remember we had our nine 30, nine 30 meeting. And then a lot of times they just get taken off guard. Like who the, f what, this is like six different numbers that you just called me from. Yeah, no problem. This is what I do all the time. I've got a whole desk full of numbers. So we'll go, let's go ahead and roll right into it. Not giving up. I love it. Hustling no. hard. Great question there, Nairi. Let's, uh, let's ask some more. A couple more questions, guys. Take your things off mute. This is, a, this is the role play call. Q&As are welcome. Is there, hi, this, this is Tracy. Um, is there anything you do, especially with telesales, when you're kind of missing that in-home rapport after the call to cement the sale? I've been listening to a lot of trainings, and I think some people send like 
certified mail policies, others send cookies, others send business cards. I'm just curious if there's anything you do afterwards to kind of avoid chargebacks and or get referrals after. Um, Chargebacks are part of the industry. Like you're going to get them. So I've had my fair share. Um, usually when it does like come in, I'll, I'll, I'll call them, but no, I don't send cookies. I don't send gift baskets. I don't send love letters or anything like that. Like I give them all of my information. The only thing that I do tell them is I, I, is I will send them an email and I say, look, I'm going to send everything in an email here. It does have my picture attached to it. Print that out, save it wherever it's accessible. Cause if something happens, I want, I, I want, and usually if it's a husband and wife, you know, I'll let them know, let, let Darlene know that this is who she's going to call because I'm going to handle everything, you know, and then that kind of like solidifies a lot of it too. Um, Cause at that point we've already touched on, touched on some emotional stuff like, great, you know, what's going to happen if, you know, Robert dies, well, I'm going to be left up Shit's Creek without a paddle kind of, kind of deal. And then, so when we go into that, be like, look, you're going to call me, I'm going to take care of it. So that way you don't have to do anything. So once you call me, we'll, I will call the carrier. We'll submit everything. So make sure you save my information. That's the, that's the only thing I do. I have no, I, I do know people who they will. They'll send gift baskets. I work with an agent down the hall. He, I mean, he does that. He'll send cookies. He has like a subscription to Otis Spunkmeyer and sends these to people. And I'm like, I don't really feel like giving away that much money. So I'm not going to. And thank what's you. on that? What's on that piece of paper? Was it a? Yeah, and thank you for the question, Tracy. Uh, what's on that piece of paper? So it's a picture of you, your license number. I mean, how do people make their own pieces of paper or, or a little document that they would send off to clients as well? Can you give some more details? What's on that? Yeah, I give a. I on that piece of paper, I have you know my full name, I have my telephone number, my email address, and then I I also have on there, contact me in case in 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 case of I think it. I think it says in case of emergency, but I'm not sure. So um, no, it says in, in case of a death, um, in case of a death or a claim needing to be filed. Um, and then I have my bright, the same picture here. I'm going to close my video. This is the picture that I have on it is that one, that one right there, smiley face and, and all that. Um, not, so, this, not this ugly mug. Pardon my ignorance here. I am just starting out. I thought once we write the policy and then if there is a death, they would contact Americo or Mutual of Omaha. They contact us and then we help facilitate that claim process. They, they that's so that's the difference. Like, yeah, sure. They can contact whoever. I mean, because, you know, let's let's just throw out a scenario here. Let's say you do this for six months and you're like, yeah, fuck this shit. I'm done. You know, whatever. I mean, 20 years down the road, down the road, something happened. Are they going to call you? No, I mean, they'll still call the carrier, but I don't plan on going anywhere. So I want them to call me. I've already established some connection. They know who I am. You know, that way they can call me and I can go back through my files and call the carrier myself. I mean, it just, it just all depends. Like, I mean, if you want to be a cold hearted person and be like, yeah, something happens, just call them and they'll take care of it go for it. But I don't plan on going anywhere. Like, I mean, I make a lot of money. Like I do pretty good in this industry. So why would I go somewhere else? Uh, no, I, I, this yeah. is just my ignorance and starting out. Yeah. I, I didn't realize yeah. that you filed claim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll file a death claim. You can do it, sure, you can do it either way. Yeah. Yep. The clients will call, if they call you, um, I typically just give them the carrier's number and then say, Hey, you know, this call them up. Any questions, give me a call. But you know, if you want to handle <laughs> it too, you can too. Yeah. Whatever works. Uh, thank Julia, you Julia, ah. go ahead i didn't i didn't know we could raise hands here this is kind of cool all right i'm getting used to this oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> julia, julia what's your what's um, your question i have a question because you had mentioned about the wife and i've seen a lot of videos like your spouse being there is it after you ask like the why and find out why because whole life you don't need a wife there i mean term you really don't need a wife there unless they're just wanting to think about it or speak with their wife i mean I'm not sure why, why or when you ask that. So there's a, there's a couple of good things and Ryan, I'm going to steal this from you. Um, number one, like if the spouse isn't there, okay. And if it, if they operate like most, most husband and wife do, that's the easiest way for them to get out of anything. First of all, because if you didn't let them know that their spouse is there, they're going to come back with you like, well, I've got to go ahead and run this by, run this by my husband. or I got to run this by my wife and we got to make sure we're on the same page. And if they're not there or they're working or, or, or whatever, you've got no ammunition to stand on. 
I mean, because I'm certainly not going to like make it. Well, I can't say that, but I mean, I would make a decision without without my 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 spouse. I can now because I'm single. But you know, <laughs> you know what whatever. But that's their, the first thing. The second thing is, and I've used this multiple times, and it works better. It well, it, it really doesn't matter where it's at. But when you get down to it, and you're you're presenting them numbers, and you're showing them whatever, okay, and they're like, that's too that you know what you know that's just too much money or. I don't know. I got to think about it. I will directly look over at the spouse, at the spouse who said that. And I will say, so you're telling me that $150 is too much to protect your wife. Eleanor. She's not worth $150 a month to you to make sure that her needs are met, to make sure that she's covered, to make sure that she doesn't have to worry. That's too much for you. And then I'll turn and look at her and I'll go, Eleanor, I am so sorry that he does not find the value in that for you and it'll make them feel like dirt like girl it'll be well okay so i'm but i'm cold i I, want to add to that too and the reason why he's doing that asking that question is because one he's not caring about the sale he's caring about the product he's caring about the family right so when we change our perspective to care about our clients and we believe in what we're doing for a living and realize that this is one of the most valuable things to have in place and everyone should have that that's when you get it, when it clicks in your head, you're not afraid to say stuff like that. But what happens when we're brand new, you're like, man, I don't want to ask that question. I'm afraid to ask it because I don't want to ruin the sale. It's, it's when you're worried about ruining the sale, then you're never making any sales. When you care about your clients and you ask tough questions like you just did, that's when it starts to click and you make sales. So um, I think that's an excellent point. To add on to that, Julia, you never want to present to one leggers because chargebacks. We do not want to have chargebacks. And, you know, let's just say the husband goes, I can make a decision. Let's say you overcome that objection that they go, you know what? Um, you know, hey, you can you can sign up for this. Doesn't matter the wife's there. They say, yeah, I need to discuss with my wife. And somehow you overcome it and get him to get him to make a make a make a purchase, right? Well, now you're leaving it up to that husband to explain the value of the policy, which they haven't been on these calls and on me training, to the wife. And, and the wife throws out a bunch of rebuttals of why they don't need it. And the husband doesn't know how to respond. And so now you're getting cancellations, right? So if you want your chargebacks to not be super high, very imperative that when as soon as you find out who the beneficiary is, and if that beneficiary lives in the home, even if it's not a spouse, let's just say it's, you know, it's a, a six-year-old man that lives with his 40-year-old son or a daughter, we know that daughter is going to be a decision maker. So you need to reschedule that appointment. And not waste any time because even if you do close it, you're you're opening up the door to some charge back. So great question, Julia. Okay. Anything you want to add to that, David? Thank you. Well, I was gonna say the Celine that when they start bucking, because they started to you started to buck again when you were asking for payment. To me, that's usually a flag that it's not affordable or they don't like the price. It's yeah. either that or a lot of it could be not establishing enough need, right? Asking enough questions and being curious of what the problem is and how to solve it as well. So need, need okay. is going to be our huge thing here. We're not trying to just sell. We're trying to find a problem and solve that problem, right? And the more that we do that, you know, the, the reason why I think that people are like, eh, I, wanna, I can only afford 20 bucks a month is you didn't build enough big enough problem for them. You didn't establish what the situation is going to look like if that person passes away, right? So, gotcha. you know, David, two things, he's throwing out high, high premiums with some confidence, but he's also asking some tough questions to build up the need um, and, and paint the situation, you know, hey, what's it look like tomorrow? You, you know, you don't come home from work. You know, what do you want to happen, right? So he's asking these tough questions to build the value uh, to 50s high premium. So it could be that they can't afford it, but typically, you know, my experience is that everyone can afford something. It's just it's just another uh, objection that you need to overcome. And the reason why they're thinking 200 bucks is too much or 100 bucks is too much is that you haven't explained the value of this enough. And ask that tough question. That's great. So you're telling me spending 200 bucks a month or investing 200 bucks a month into your family's protection to make sure all those plans that you have are still going to be executed financially is too much to spend on your family? Is that what you're telling me? These are the nice, tough questions that you can do to build. And I'm just curious. You know, I'm just curious. That's okay. If, it's, if your family's not worth 200 bucks a month, that's okay. Tell me why. And, you know, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find something that they are worth, right? Are they worth, uh, you know, 50 bucks a month? Like, what are they worth? <laughs> so, yeah, great stuff.
Um, but let's open it up for Brian. Brian, you've had your hand raised here. Uh, what's the question you got for us, Brian? Yeah, it's it's probably just a little bit more on process. Um, I heard him. He kind of went through, you know, putting stuff into Genie and to figure out which plan to use or 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 to start processing. Um, is there a general format that you're using to, uh, you know, put into to the genie to tell you exactly what you're trying to achieve? Uh, do you use a specific format for that or not? And I'm going to no. answer that for, for David. So we can all use Slack, right? And if you guys don't have access to Slack, FML America Slack, you can go to FML America. You can download it. If you're having some trouble, reach out to me or upline. From the Slack app, we can add any of our uh, downlines and, and send them a, uh, a personal invite. Now, what I do on FFLRush.com, which David just got transferred to my team, um, is I try to train you guys to use those cheat sheets. So instead of you guys having to, you know, not know how underwriting works, we can use the cheat sheets. And actually, that's what that's what those underwriting genies are doing is just using that. But um, what you would put in there is this mail 54. Uh, any kind of medical background, got cancer four years ago, had a heart attack three years ago, uh, is on this medication, the name of the medication um, and what it's used for. And the name of this medication is what it's used for. The name of this medication what it's used for. So every single detail, you're, you're typing that up and putting it in home help and they'll get back to you to let you know what you qualify for. Now for our team, we're trying to start you guys off nice and simple so you're not overwhelmed. Start off with Americo. Right. We have our three products. We have our our uh, our Eagle Premier if they're older. We have the uh, 125 between you know 40 and 60. And then we have our CBO 140 and below. So you only have three products you got to write. And if you use your your uh, cheat sheets, you can see if they're going to be declined or not. And then if they can't get approved on one of those, you go strictly to the accidental. Unless you're writing final expense then you're only going to be focusing on the Eagle Premier, because a lot of times if we're if we're starting off, you might not be contracted with everybody yet or know all these products and you start getting overwhelmed and the underwriting genie is not going to know that you're just focusing on these four because you're brand new. That way you're not overwhelming yourself with not knowing this one or this one. You guys can just focus on four products and there's still people to this day that are writing $200,000 of a life business a year that are only writing America. Okay. So those are great products. Plus America gives us 8% bonus. Now, if you want to learn all those other products and Aetna and, and everything else, and just be prepared that the underwriting genie might push you towards a product that you're not familiar with yet and might cause some anxiety because you haven't practiced your e-apps and whatnot, okay? So does that answer your question, Brian? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, any more questions for us right now? Open it up. Okay, well, I have one. Uh, David, I have yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I know sometimes um, when I first started, I really got tripped up on someone being very specific when I'm trying to set the appointment that they're like, I just want to know how much it costs. Just tell me the numbers. I've already had coverage like this before. I just need to know how much it costs. Like they won't let go of it. How do you jump over it? The, the way that I do is I let them know. I said, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have a, I don't have a cost on this and I can't go, you know, I can't go. And this is where I set them up for zoom, not a telesale if they do this, uh, because I'll tell them no, because it's secured information, secure documents, things, things like that. I do have to be able to see you face to face. Um, so I can't go over any cost. Plus we do have to do a little bit of, a little bit of research, research on my end before I can give, give that to you. So I'll go, I, I promise I'll do my job and get all that when we do meet tomorrow at nine o'clock. Um, does that sound good? And that sounds good. All right, David. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some rapid fire rebuttals for you. I know your answer is gonna be short and sweet. Remember, if we give it a lot of breath and we come off needy and salesy, the shorter the better. And you're probably gonna notice this from David as we do it. So some rapid fire rebuttals here. You ready? Let's do it. All right, I can't afford it. Um, I can't afford not to. I mean, we can, I can work within whatever budget we have here. Um, what I need from you is I need complete transparency and complete honesty and tell me which one of these fit best within your budget. Love it. All right. I need to talk to my daughter first. Great. Let's go ahead and call her. <laughs> okay, good. All right. We can't get her on the phone. 
Great. Let's call her from a different number. (laughs) (laughs) And a lot of times too, at least for me on that one, I'd say guys, you know, Hey, this is a gift that you leave for your daughter, for her well being. Um, do you actually call your daughter and ask her every Christmas if she wants a present or do you just do that because you want to get a gift, right? So the question is, you know, this is this is not really her choice. I mean, if my mom called me and said, hey, do I need life insurance? I'd tell her, no, I'll take care of it. But she bought me the gift because she doesn't want me stressing out about covering her fun- funeral costs for $30,000, right? She wants to make sure she's taking care of that. Or she doesn't want me stressing out about making a mortgage payment for 1400 bucks a month. Or she wants to leave my grandkid a gift, right? So this isn't really your daughter's decision. It's your decision. And you need to make that choice. If you want to leave that responsibility and you're gone, that's your choice to make, not your daughter's, right? And any, any daughter or son is going to tell you it's okay to take care of it, but you got to make that choice if you want to leave them that debt and that burden, or if you want to take the responsibility yourself. All right, let's move on. We just moved in um, and uh, we have to see oh. what my finances be. Oh, go ahead. Hold on. The other thing that I'll that I'll add, add to that, Ryan, is you typically I won't say I won't tell them. Let's call them from a different number. But typically, what I what I would say, and and I will do this, is ask them. Well, do you need that? Do you need to ask your daughter to make a purchase at the grocery store? You know, this is you know exactly what exactly what you said. Like you know, this is this is on you. This is a gift to her. This is something that we're doing to set up set up for her. Uh, this isn't you know she's a beneficiary, not a payer, not a payer on the policy. So you know, let's go ahead and move forward. Exactly. Now, let me ask you a quick question. When you're dialing these instant leads out of 100 leads, how many yeses do you get? How many uh, wrong phone numbers do you get? How many no's do you get? What's your percentages on average? Typically, you sh- and I'm going to be straight with everybody here. Typically, I don't get a hold of them the first time. When I'm dialing them, I usually, I mean, I usually get 10% of them to pick up the phone. Um, but one thing that I am better at than most people is I am a persistent son of a bitch. So I will dial and dial and dial and dial until, until they pick up. Um, I've got four, five three, three, different. Three, three rings in a row, tw- three, four times a day. So you're getting 12 rings, right? Yeah. So by the time they finally do, finally do answer, if I can get them on the phone, I mean, I got a pretty good shot at book, booking an appointment, especially if I can get that wall down and let them know, hey, I'm not a salesman. I'm just here to drop off some information or get you the information that you requested. Like, simple as simple as that. All right, cool. Now, um, oh, we just wait, moved in. Just, we gotta... But what you just said in regards, I'll just, I just need to stop by and drop off the information and they're like, well, I'm not going to be there, but go ahead and do that. Not a problem. This is sensitive information and I can't, I'll ha- I, someone has to be there to, to pick it up. So let's go ahead and find a time that does work. Good one. Good one. All right. I'm not interested. We get that all the time on the instant leads because people fill out, you know, requests for information because they're idiots and they don't want it. But we know it's just an excuse. Now, I'd say half the time this happens is because you sound like a telemarketer. And because you didn't take your business serious and you didn't practice your script and get confident at it, right? I mean, if you have to look at the paper to read it, you're, you just haven't practiced enough. You really should get this down. That should be your crutch and then and then memorize it and be yourself with it, right? And would you right. agree with that, David? Absolutely. Okay. But, so, it, but if I did, if you did call me and I went, I'm not interested, what would you say? The first thing that I'm going to first thing that I'll say is not not a problem. My job is just to go ahead and get you get you over this information. What you do with the information from there is is up to you. But my job, I've been assigned and I've been appointed to get this information over to you. So I do have to I do have to at least do that. Um, so what time works better, nine or nine thirty for me getting this to you? OK, and then what if we were uh, what we were doing a, a telemarketing uh, appointment booking one? Yeah, so I'm not interested anymore. Yeah, not a problem. I do still have to, you know, just so I can go ahead and get it off, get it off my list here. Otherwise, you're still going to receive a bunch of phone calls. And then it's going to keep reminding me on the daily too that I still haven't dropped this information off or got this information over to you. Um, let's go ahead and do set up a time where I could just briefly go over to it. And like I said, what you what you do with it from there is completely up to you. But I have been appointed by the state of Florida to go ahead and get this to you because it is something that you requested at that time. And because it is sensitive information, I want to make sure I do go over it with you like that. Um, so again, 9 or 930. And the reason why that's a dumb objection is that they're not interested in what? They don't even know the cost yet. 
So perfect. That's actually why I'm calling. So I can get you that information required to get that to you. And then you can make that choice from there. So you prefer a nine or nine thirty. Exactly. All right. Um, here's another good one. Hey, I don't do auto drafts. You have to, I want a direct bill. You have to send me a bill in the mail. I honestly haven't really run into that one too, too, too much. Um, All right. So, but I mean, if, if I was to, if I was to, let's take a shot in the dark here. Um, Auto draft. I, so, well, with technology today, I mean, everything is set up and in order for this to be a contract, we can switch that to a, to a later date, but in order to get the contract go, going in order to make this all official, I do have to go ahead and put the, put this in here. But again, like I said, at a later date, 12 mm -hmm. months from now, we can go ahead and switch it. Yeah, I do that exactly. And it does work. Oh, uh, let's do this one. Um, I, you probably get this on instant leads a lot. You know, I already have coverage. Great. I tell you what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a free policy review and make sure that you have the ample amount of coverage that you need and it fits, fits your lifestyle and everything is all set up properly. Um, I would say eight times out of 10 that I do do a, a, a policy review. We do go through, we find something that's not there that somebody said was there or something like that. So let's find a time where we can go ahead and sit down and review that together. Um, I didn't fill this out. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> um, I didn't fill this out. Why are you calling me? Well, it, somebody did. Uh, here's what I can't tell you. If somebody did fill that out, I do have your information here. I'm going to verify one thing with you. Your birthday is 11080, correct? All right. So because I correct. do have I don't that. I don't know how you got that info, though. I don't know how you yeah, got that it's, info. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, because I do have that info, like I do want to make sure that I do sit down with you and go over this. So that way, if you didn't fill it out, we can address it properly. Um, but I would like to go ahead and still meet with you nine or nine 30. Good, good. So I want you, I want you guys to see that I'm being tough on him, but he studied. He's not making excuses and saying it's the lead, right? He's proof in the pudding that instant leads work and he's practicing. OK, so getting good at how to overcome these objections. And if you're going to if you want to watch this video and you want to be good at this, you got to ask yourself, why did I start this company? Why did I start business? Am I going to watch this once? Am I going to practice out loud? Am I write down these objections? You know, how serious are you guys going to take this? If you're not going to take it serious, go get a wage job. Right. You get the amount of energy that you put into this business is what you're going to get out of it. And it doesn't take a lot. You guys spend probably 10 hours practicing this stuff, 20 hours, you know, really saying it out loud and practicing it and we're and getting on these role play calls every single week and going, OK, I want to I want to have do role play with David. I'm going to say some stuff. He's going to throw some rebuttals. And I'm going to see if he, he can get me. OK, that's what the point of this call is going to be, guys. So be excited, be practicing. And then we're going to hear from some of you guys before we get off this call today. But you can see that David doesn't flinch. Um, he's confident and overcomes these objections. And for you guys out there going, these leads suck. No, it's you that sucks. Okay. You just need to practice a little bit more. Okay. They do work. They do work. Yes. You're going to have no's it's, it's sales. Find no's. Yeses are going to come. The more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. Right. And we make a thousand dollars for a yes. 11 bucks to a thousand. That's incredible. Okay. So let's practice more. All right, David, anything you want to add to that speech? Yeah, the, the the only thing that I'll add to it is don't take it personal. You know, I I did in the beginning is like when somebody would tell me no or they'd give me rebuttals, it's like I would take it personal and then I would have to I would have to take 15, 20 minutes and come down from it and be like, why did they do this to me? And this and I'm gonna be I'm being straight real. Like I really did. Like, I mean. I would walk around, I'd smoke and, you know, like, what the, I, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. Don't take it personal. That's why, like the moment that you remove your emotion from it and you're like, okay, great. They said, no, on to the next one. Like, I mean, this, this, this whole business is a game of numbers. It's a, you know, it's a game of large numbers. Like you're keep dialing, keep, keep setting appointments. Like you're going to keep hitting them, you know? And then the other hey, fight, thing is, fight, fight, fight. Good. Every every no leads to a yes, you know. So when you do get a no, 
like count it as a victory because you're one more no closer to your yes. And I know both Jamie and Chase are laughing right now because we've been preached that for the last year. But it's true. It yeah. really is. It's got truth. Like every no is closer to a yes. And it's all random too. You might get yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. You could get no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 yo. And you can't judge it by a day. You can't judge it by a week. You got to judge it by by a month. Now you have the data. You've invested. You keep purchasing leads. You keep hitting the phones. You keep putting time into it. Now you have the data for it to count. Don't count your days. Yesterday I did a zero. Very frustrating. Doesn't happen often. But we all can have days like that. And the day doesn't count. The week counts more. And the month counts. It's king. So the month is king. All right. Um, all right. I want to go to this one. I can't afford this bill at this time. I can't afford this. Did you say can't afford this meal? This bill. I can't afford this bill at this time. Ah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if if you get the I can't afford this bill at this time, I mean, we missed the ballpark. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and sit back down here real quick and re-go over the budget and see where see where we're at. Um, you know, cause we can, we can fit it in there and we can find something that does work, does work within that budget. Um, like I said, you know, when we first started the conversation, Ryan, I told you I needed you to be, you know, completely transparent and completely honest with me. And that based off of what you told me here, this is where I went. So let's revisit that and see, see where we missed the mark at. Love it. I love it. Um, and I see your hand, Julia, we're going to get to, I'm just going to do a couple more of these good rebuttals here. Um, um, I am, uh, I want to, let's say you have someone elderly. Yeah. I want a uh, $300,000 of coverage for, uh, for it should, should cost me about like, uh, about 50 bucks a month. You know, I want to get that. I'm 70 <laughs> I'm on 10 medication. Absolutely. Absolutely. It should cost you about $50 a month, but unfortunately the way how our carriers look at it is because you are elderly, it is a higher risk policy. So I can't do that. We can get you that kind of coverage, but it's going to be a lot more. I tell you what, why don't we sit down, we'll go over everything and then we'll see what your needs are and we'll look at your budget and we'll find what works best for you. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah. I just need to do some more shopping around. Not a problem at all. That's what my job is here for, is to do, is I take all of your shopping out of it. Just like you use Instacart to deliver your groceries, that's what you're doing right now, is you're using me to do all the shopping for you. And I promise you, I tell you what, after we get this, uh, after we get this set up, you can call whatever agent or whoever company, and they're going to tell you the exact same thing that I do. We'll even look at it together if you want to. All right. I just don't make decisions today. <laughs> I get that one all the time. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing is it's a good thing that you don't because neither does my carrier. They usually take about seven to 10 days to think on it. Um, so what my job is because I'm, because I'm, we're doing this today is we're going to fill out the application together. Okay. We're going to send it to submit it to them. And then they're going to go ahead and take seven to 10 days. And while they are taking that seven to 10 days, you can also think about it. Um, the only, and then if they're still hesitant, like, well, this and that, I'll bring out the grace period, you know, as well. Well, you know, once it's after, in, after in place, you do have grace period to think about it as well. But I only use that in a extreme rare instance because then it gives them the opportunity to back out. I love it. All right, I'm going to end this one, Julie, and then we'll answer the call and then we'll do some role play with some movies here. Um, all right. So what about if you have someone older? Maybe there's a lot of good leads in there that I love. If you guys can get some mortgage protection leads for five bucks, you know, the one month old MP leads, that's the same lead that I purchased for $60. Um, you know, they, those are great start off ones. But let's just say we get to someone that's uh, 65 and they want their whole house paid off for affordable and they just don't understand that it's going to cost a lot, you know, at 65. How do you handle that objection? Yeah, I want the whole uh, house paid off. Well, I'll tell them the exact same thing. I mean, we can get that, but it is going to, you know, we're going to have to stack policies to do that based on here. Um, based on the information we've, we've already gone over, what I did put together is we are able to cover, you know, 32 months of mortgage payments for you. That way, Miss Betty over here isn't left high and high and dry. She'll actually have 32 months to figure out what you want to do with the house, whether it's put it on the market, whether it's keep it, whether she needs to go back to work. Uh, but we are able to cover 32 months of those mortgage payments for you. And that's a rare find. So go ahead and let's uh, sign up now. <laughs> okay. All right, Julie, what's your question? Handles objections perfectly. See, he's responding, you know, quickly, easy, short, um, understanding it, keep going back to getting rid of the think about rebuttal, which is 
there's nothing to think about. We got to qualify first, right? So I love that approach. Excellent job there, David. Appreciate your help here. All right, go ahead, Julia. No, he had already answered it. It was about the spouse. All right, perfect. All right, well, let's let's trade positions here real quick. Uh, Martina's on the phone here. Martina, let's hear real fast how you set your appointments. Um, Martina, this week, I got to congratulate her. She did top dog this week. She did $14,000 in one week. Um, so excellent job there, Martina. Um, let's kind of hear from you a little bit on your how your script goes. And then we'll make it kind of short and sweet. I know this is the role play call, but I just uh, wanted to prove to you guys that the instants do work. David's working them. He's doing a thousand percent ROI. <laughs> we went over some objections. So uh, proof's in the pudding. As we practice, we can get better. Martina, take it away. Let's do, let's do some role play. Let's see how you set your appointments. Okay. You hear me? Hello, Ryan. This is Martina. I'm giving you a call back from the Mortgage Protection Office regarding your loan with Rocket Mortgage. That's $256,000. You filled it out and sent it in, and you were requesting information on a protection plan that would pay off or pay down your mortgage in the event of disability or illness or death. And um, I see that um, your name's not on it, but Susan is. I'm assuming Susan is your wife. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. It's actually a bad time to talk right now. I think you're going to call that. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, I understand. I have to get going too. I'm going to have you off the phone in just a minute. So I have that she's 44 years old. When does she turn 45? Uh, she turns 45. I redirect, go back to your script. Uh, she turns 45 in a month. Perfect. Perfect. That's great timing because it is based on age and health. So um, basically, I'm going to be in your area tomorrow between 9 and 11. So um, I'm back to back appointments. Are you and your wife both home tomorrow in the morning? Um, and let's focus on a Zoom appointment, OK? Oh, Since most okay. people are remote here. Um, so yeah, so I have availability. Let's pick up from that. So then I would then I would ask, are you and your wife are, are you and your wife both working or are either of you retired? Um, we're we are working, yes. Okay, perfect. Are you guys home together either in the morning, evening, or in the middle of the day? Um, yeah, we usually get home at in the evening time. Okay, around what time are you both there? Uh, we get home usually about 6.30. Okay, perfect. I don't have a time at 6.30, but I do have a 7.15 and a 7.45. Which one's going to work best for you guys? Um, is there any way you could just mail me the information? Unfortunately, we can't. We have to actually verify that you are who you are just to make sure you're not in a hospital bed or hooked to a tank of oxygen, which I'm sure isn't true, but we're required to do that to get you the information. So is 715 or 745 better for you guys? Um, I guess the 745. And then it, perfect, do you know how perfect. much it's going to cost? Do you know how much it's going to cost? That's Martina? exactly what we're going to discuss when I get there. So grab a pen real quick. I'm required to give you my license number. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, it's one nine seven four two six nine. Can you read that back to me, please? Blah, 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 blah. Now, is there any reason why the two of you wouldn't be there? Um, not that I can think of right now. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so tomorrow I'll meet you guys at 745. Just know I am literally back to back, so I might be a little bit early or I might be a little bit late. So just give me that window in case I'm not there right at 745. Don't panic. I will be there to make sure to get you the information. I really look forward to helping you and Susan. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. That was excellent. Now, now as far, we're not going to do your entire role play, but let's do the opening um, all the way up to the point to where when you're doing your appointment on a Zoom or tele telesale. And then uh, we'll fast forward past the medical and we'll do your clothes. All right. That was an excellent job, Martina. Um, anyone have any other objections they want to throw at her? David, you want to throw one real quick, see how she responds to it? Oh, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> All the objection. Um, the biggest one that I that I that I always get is, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and take some time to think about it, and we'll call you back. We'll we'll go ahead and uh, call you back to let you know. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Um, actually, you do get time to think about it because when we put in the application, you're not immediately approved. So they need time. The carrier needs time to think about it also. So while they're doing that, then you're, you will also have time to think about it. So which yeah. day would you do? Oh, yeah, but I, I still, before, before we submit anything, I think uh, me and the missus, we, we do want to discuss this a little, a little bit further. That's exactly why they give you that window. So we get you locked in and then when we when we send in the application, they will decide in about five to seven days. I will be very much in contact with you as soon as they approve or deny, so that if they do deny, then we can pivot to a different company. Meanwhile, you guys can discuss it because you're not locked right in. You do get 30 days to either move it up, move it down, or keep it the same. Okay, well let's do let's do this then. Is uh, um, uh, the the number that you that you gave me here? Can I can I call you tomorrow at this time? You can absolutely call me at that number anytime. But right now, what we want to do is get everything submitted so that they have the time to look at it. Because here's the thing, I have had people wait, and unfortunately, the I can't make this up. The husband died that night. I can, I'm not making it up. So to protect you, the best way I can is to submit the application right now, and then we will discuss it tomorrow. But I thought you said, well, I, I thought you said they're going to take seven to 10 days to think about it. Exactly. You want to talk about it some more tomorrow as you talk to it, talk about it with your wife and you come up with more questions. I'm more than happy to answer all your questions and keep very diligent in making sure that the comp the carrier is doing what they need to do. And as soon as they get you approved or we need to change to a different company, then I'm certainly going to be right in contact with you, David. Okay. Sounds good. And we, and we kind of switched. Uh, we were doing a, a setting appointment objections and kind of switched to the, the presentation oh, shit. objections. Part. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. okay. Martina, 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 Martina didn't, it, it, it didn't. It didn't phase Martina at all. So it's all right. But the nice thing is, you know, if we're going to close that way, we need to make sure that at the end of every single presentation that we're stopping our chargeback. So a really good question to ask is, what are the most three important reasons why you got this policy in place? This is after it's closed. Right. And we're, we're trying to, you know, establish need again. Right. Um, cancels happen. We don't establish need. So what we're looking for before we hang up the call with anybody or leave the house is no, 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 Ryan, I'm keeping it. Right. If you leave the house on, let's just, you can think about this thing later. And that's what we can use to at least take some of the anxiety out to let them fill out an app and see if they're approved. Once it's done, now we can be hard in the paint. So we make sure we stop our chargebacks. We ask them, what are the three most important reasons got this in place? And if they go, eh, might not keep it, now's your chance to go, why wouldn't you keep it? You know, hey, you, you don't come home from work tomorrow. What's the situation look like again? You're reestablishing some need. And then make sure you guys are giving that important protection notice out every single time you read it to them to stop your competition. And that's on FFL Rush Live. Print those things out. Save them your phone. Email them to people. Read those things. And uh, you'll notice your chargebacks and cancellations go down about 10% with that simple form. And that's available on FFLrush.com and our basic training. So I just want to be clear on that stuff too. Um, let's hear your opening approach. And those are great rebuttals, David. Um, let's hear your opening real quick on your presentation. Let's look at, give people an idea of, of how, that, how that goes. Um, and we'll do a Zoom call. How about a Zoom call, okay? Um, okay. Go ahead. So, yeah, I'm here. Zoom call. <laughs> Just telling you, usually there's always some type of problem of either visual or sound. So I, let's just do I've telesales, actually. Let's, let's let's just do telesales. <laughs> All right. So, hello. Oh, hello. telesales. Uh, um, I don't do those, but that's OK. <laughs> hello, Ryan. We'll this pretend. is Martina. Thanks for joining me. Pop, what? We'll just pretend. I answered the phone, ready for my appointment. <laughs> Hello, this is Ryan. 
Hi, Ryan, this is Martina. I'm glad we could get together. So I'm gonna make this really simple. So um, a lot of times people fill out the form for different reasons. What was the reason why you sent it in initially? I uh, just wanted to look into it. Okay, perfect. Were you, were you looking into it for both you and your wife? Um, yeah, uh, just, yeah, I guess for both of us, just want to see what the cost was. Okay, gotcha. But initially, a lot of people, they're, they're curious about cost and they're curious about coverage and what it costs. But usually it's in regards to protecting their family. Is What kind of protection are you looking for in regards to protecting your family? Um, you know, I guess it's just in case something happens to us, we have some money. Okay, so what does it look like if, if you <coughs> were to die tonight, what would that look like for Susan? Like, obviously she'd be devastated, but where would that put her financially? She'd lose quite a bit of money. I mean, she'd lose, you know, $100,000 a year. Let's say $50,000 a year, you know, I guess. I mean, she could get by though. I mean, it'd be tighter, but she could get by. Okay, okay. And if she passed first, what would happen on your side of the street? Same thing. I mean, we can survive, you know. I mean, obviously, we can survive without it, honestly. You think we could be able to pay the bills on our income we have now? Understood. And you know what? That's a great place to be in. And the reason why I'm working with you is to see how we can make that situation comfortable in case something horrible does happen and you're not prepared. So basically what I do is I work with a bunch of carriers. I'm what they call a broker. And basically I'm, um, I am registered with licensed with all of them. And I work with FFL family first life, and we only contract with the top mortgage protection companies. And so since I'm with so many different carriers, I don't work for any of them. I just work with them so that I can figure out what fits both you and Susan and your budget. And I'm not captive. So I, I'm not particularly married to anybody any certain carrier um, specifically. So I'm just gonna take a couple minutes to go over some of the health questions um, and a little bit more about the finance. So um, we'll start with you, Ryan. Are you on any prescribed medications? Yeah, and I'm gonna pause real quick there. So Martina, we wanna get, I personally think, and you can chime in on it, David, if you want, but I think we can keep asking more questions until we either get, I don't care about my family or yes, I do. So in that situation where they said, ah, I think I'll be fine either way, if I don't have it, you know, you can, you can dig a little bit more. You can ask a little bit more questions and go. So, so how much money do you make? 50,000. How much do you make? 50,000. So you're telling me losing $50,000 a year is not going to affect you. You know, why is that? Would having $50,000 extra or $100,000 help you tax-free income, right? So engage with some more questions. Well, yeah, it would, right? So, you know, try to, try to engage into some more questions. Are you telling me that you don't want, to, you don't want your, your family to have an extra 100 grand to help them out in that time of loss? You're telling me you want them to struggle and give up, sacrifice some things that they normally would do with losing that $50,000, is that what you're telling me? So, we're, we're, again, we're get, engaging with some more curiosity questions to kind of find that need. Um, and we can sell these policies before we even give options. And I feel like the ones that do it the best, it's already sold before we ask medical questions. It's sold before we give options. Now we're just trying to find the plan that works for them best that fits their budget. Uh, anything to add to that, David? No, I mean, that's it. It's all, it's all about finding the why. Like when you find when when you hook, when you do find that why, like you instantly know it. Um, and then just play everything, your entire conversation now revolves around that. So, I mean, for instance, like if you, you know, if they're why as their kid, you know, all of your stuff looks around it, you know, so you're telling me you don't want, you know, like my, I've got three daughters. So if someone was coming at me, you know, and saying, so if, if you died, like, wouldn't you want Lily to have, you know, this, this, and this and be like, well, yeah. Yeah, now that you put it that way, I do. Okay, so so let me ask you a question: Is you know is fifty thousand enough for Lily? And I start looking at it like, 
hell no. I mean, we, we got to go higher. So, well, and then you add Emmy and Savannah into it and I'm like, shit, uh, get me the most coverage that we can, we can get because between three girls, we're out of it. <laughs> so, right. And, and Martina, the one thing I think is excellent about her is, and, and like I said, we're trying to establish four things, trust, uh, shopping that we shop. We're trying to say that we have to qualify first, take out the think about it. And then we're trying to establish need. You can do those in all different ways. And you can see when Martina did it, she started off with the need first. You know, hey, what's going on? Trying to find the need. Later, she probably established her trust, was showing her ID or whatever. Maybe she sent an email already. She established, she talked about that she shops, right? She already went into that. Um, and so we're just getting rid of those, those four key points in our own words um, right away. Um, now we're running out of time and I know some people on here, I appreciate you guys being the call. I hope this is good information. If it was awesome information today, give some thumbs up. Thumbs up guys. All right. I like it. So um, let's, let's, who's practiced their script? Who's, who's spent some time, got it memorized and wants to test it out as a group. And that way we can kind of hear how you're sounding. And if there's any tips or, or tricks we can give you, we can make you better. And that's really what we want this call to be about. But I thought it was an excellent call to kind of hear some role play from some people that are already killing it so we can get some examples. But we also want some newbies to be able to speak as well. And then uh, for us to give you guys some tips on, on how to get better. So raise your hand, speak up now, and please be brave. This is a free call to get better. It costs you money doing a live call. <laughs> so <laughs> practice with the guys here to get some tips. All right, Cassandra, you ready? Uh, yeah, now mine is not memorized because I've changed it 16 times this week based on what sounded good when I was on the calls. And okay. also, I have not yet made it very far into a script on a call because <laughs> I'm not getting very many people on the phone. So, okay. okay um, so, so, so part of that might be how we're sounding. We'll figure that out. And then part of it might just be that we're not dialing them enough. You know, three times in a row, I would start with your leads three times in a row, three rings in a row, put three columns on a phone burner. So a thousand three times. And then two hours later, you start back at the beginning, two hours again, start the beginning, two hours again, start the beginning. Then you start eliminating them. You're going to get down the list. And you do that every day until everyone answers. All right, go ahead, Cassandra. Let's hear how you sound. Ring, ring, hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say no I'm focused on, I'm doing no the, uh, the one. Good. I'm doing the one call, the one call close, close script because okay. I've been watching cool. Erica's training videos a lot and I like the way that she does things. So, all right. Awesome. All right, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Ryan. This is Cassandra. I'm with the Benefit Center for the state of Arizona. Um, I'm calling in regards to a request that you made online about the state regulated life insurance programs. I just need to verify a few things here so I can get this information out to you. You listed right, your date pause, of birth. Really we're gonna we're gonna pause we're gonna pause okay so some quick things it it comes off a little too friendly right a little too friendly a little telemarketing um we want to have a tonality that's kind of like more boss mode and assertive and, and direct to the point so we can kind of change our tone a little bit if if i was kind of calling you going you know hey cassandra this is ryan hey you know getting back to you from the benefit center here and they're automatically going to have a red flag because why is this person being nice to me? Cause they want me to like them. And then why do they want me to like them? It's because they want something. Right. So try to be a little more uh, monotone and, and uh, assertive, maybe raise your voice a little bit and kind of like I'm the boss. This is standard procedure. This is how it's going to go. Let's see if we can change it a little bit there and see if we can hear a difference. That's where I'm struggling right? because that, and that's, that's me toned down. I'm a very bubbly person. <laughs> Biggest this is advice. what I'm having a hard time with. Cassandra, biggest advice I can give on that, okay, because I'm the same. I'm a very high, high string energy dude. Do um, you know Winnie the Pooh? All right, so you know Eeyore? Yeah. Channel your inner Eeyore. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to sink that far. <laughs> so <good>. stay there. <laughs> but thank you. That's good. <clears throat> okay. Kind of like you're telling a boring story, you know, like, like if, if you went on a trip, you're like, well, I went to the airport, we waited in line <laughs> and then we went through security and then you know, like that kind of storytelling. OK. All right. Uh, let's try it one more time. We're going to get this. That's the point of role play. All right. Raymond Galo. Hi, Ryan. This is Cassandra. I'm with the Benefit Center for the state of Arizona. 
um, calling in regards to a request that you made online about the state regulated life insurance programs. I just need to verify a few things. Let's here. pause real quick. Let's pause. That's already sounding way better, right? A little more commanding, just, hey, get through it. Standard protocols, my job. I do this all day long. I don't, I don't care too much in it. You took the neediness out of it and it sounded already a lot better. Would you agree, agree Martina or David? Everyone give a thumbs up if it sounded better. <laughs> Yeah, already better. See, and that's what we're doing. Practices makes perfect. Um, we'll let you continue on, but I want to pause you and say congratulations. That's actually sounding a lot more. So more monotone. The perspective is, you know, you're just like the cable company and someone asked for a time to get the cable fixed. They're not going to call you up and go, hey, Cassandra, hey, how's it going today? Hey, I'm going to get you, Cassandra. Hey, don't want to take up too much of your time, but you might be able to have a cable guy come out. You know, like, Hey, these are the times we have. This is how it's going to go, right? All right. Good, good, good job question. there, Cassandra. Good twist. Yeah, go ahead. I have one question that I just thought of. Um, I got a woman on the phone earlier, and I do have an appointment with her, but um, she asked me, <laughs> um, how do you get paid? <laughs> and I was like, um, I said, well, honestly, that, it, that really varies from policy to policy and company to company, you know. Um, really, it doesn't matter to me. I got 150 other people call to call today. So, I mean, if you're not interested, that's fine. You know, we'll move on to somebody else. But so, so remember, <laughs> less is say, more. So, so, so any rebuttal, say we get paid a commission if we help a family. Some families we do, some families we don't, and then continue forward. Less is more. It's okay to be honest. Yeah, I, I knew she was looking for that word commission, though, because like that's what she wanted me to say. It. I honestly don't ever get asked that. And the reason why she probably asked that is because of your, your tonality, your perspective was coming off needy too friendly. And that's why she said, how do you get paid? Like, you, obviously you want something. She could pick up on it, your tonality. And that's probably why she got, she asked that, but I never get asked that question. But if, if you do, just be honest. Yeah, we get paid commission. Sometimes we get, we able to help some people. Sometimes we not. I'm going to go over some options. If one works for you, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. And then go right back to where you picked up. So short and sweet. All right, let's hear it one more time, Cassandra. We're going to let you continue on. Your tonality is getting good. All right, Raymond the left. Hi, Ryan. This is Cassandra. I'm with the Benefit Center for the State of Arizona. The reason I'm calling today is in regards to a request you made online um, about the state-regulated life insurance programs. I just need to verify a few things here so I can get this out to you. Um, you listed your <coughs> date of birth as June 21st of 1981. Is that correct? That's correct. Perfect. Um, now, when you filled this out, were you looking to cover just yourself or do you have a spouse as well? Uh, just myself. All right, let's stop there. So tonality is good. We fixed that. Um, I don't really, me personally, I don't really like the benefit center thing. Um, but if you say it right now, they're saying it. As long as you're saying your tonality you know, correctly, I think that's good. I, I more would just do freestyle. Hey, hey, Cassandra, Ryan, get back to you on the life insurance information requested. Uh, for Arizona, those life insurance programs, just need to verify your date of birth is 62181. We got that right. You know, I, I think, you know, just telling them no, you know, I don't know if you need to say benefit center, it's up to you, but it's just extra words and simplifying it is, is better. Cassandra, I'm Ryan, getting back to you on some information you requested on the Arizona life insurance programs, have your date of birth listed here. And I did update the script on FFL Rush to be a little more simple. But, you know, which one do you guys like better? You can speak up. Hey, this is Ryan from the Benefit Center here in Arizona. Give me back to you on some information you requested. Or we, the reason why we're calling is you requested some information on the Arizona State License Program. I think it's just me personally, I like it just more simple. But I mean, it's up to you. Um, I was talking to a lot of people who had mailed in um, requests for information in Connecticut. And so that's the one I was using, the Benefit Center one because they had they had requested the state regulated Connecticut blah blah and I had the mailers so mm -hmm. I was using and, and, that and, the, them. and here's the secret if you like saying benefit coordinator then it's it benefit center then guess what that's what you should use because it's about your confidence if you don't like saying it if you don't say it that's what you should use about your confidence the key is is being you and finding what works for you and, and being the most confident you can be right so it, it's it, whatever works, it's what you believe will work, right? That's, that's kind of the key. 
All right. So I think that was good, Cassandra. We made some couple tweaks. I want you to keep practicing that script. Try to get it to a point where it's memorized. Don't you don't have to say every word, but eventually we want to get this thing towards memorized to where I don't have to look at it and I can say the general topics and, and be Cassandra and that confident, assertive person that, hey, I'm calling you up. We're going to get this thing done today. I'm in control. You're going to answer my questions. Anything you say, perfect. That's why I'm calling back to your script and get that confident tone. But I could already hear that if the, the first version, probably we're getting some hangups versus the second version, I was paying attention a lot more. So good job there. All right, Julia, you ready to do some practice role play? I am. All right. Have you practiced quite a bit? Oh, yeah. Are you, ta you taking it serious? All right. Let's hear it. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan. This is Julia. I'm giving you a follow-up phone call about the information you requested online about the state life insurance programs. I have your birth date as 12-25-70. Is that correct? All right. So I know you got your accent and I love the friendly voice. I want that friendly oh. voice to come out as we're talking to them later on in the script. If we can start feeling more friendly, we want to be a little more serious, a little more commanding, just getting my job done. So again, this is where we get hung up on because I can, I can sense the, the friendliness in it, which triggers me to think you want something. Okay. So a little more boring, a little more dull, a little more commanding, a little more raise your voice. <laughs> Um, and let's see if we can notice a, a shift, guys, in how it sounds. Okay, and that's what we're looking for here is like, who do I want to talk to? I feel like I want to talk to him. I my little red flag here. What is going on here? Is it a little telemarketing or is it just someone that's doing their job and, and I'm, you know, and give me the information I asked for? Okay, let's try one more time. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan, this is Julia. I'm giving you a follow-up phone call about the information you requested online about the life insurance programs. I have your birth date as 12-25-70. Is that correct? Um, that would sound a little bit better. A little bit better. Let's not do programs because you're asking with a question mark. Just programs. Okay. Let's try that. Just just programs. If we'll put programs with a question mark, it's like, you, like are you sure you know like uh, who i am i just want to make sure you know who i am i'm kind of scared you wouldn't know who i am and i don't want you to hang up on me right that's that that raising it with the life insurance programs are we on the same page please don't hang up on me i want something or getting back to you on the on the arizona state life insurance programs i have your date of birth this is here six twenty one eighty one. see the difference I'm trying okay. to take the neediness out of it okay so ring ring hello Hey, Ryan, this is Julia. I'm giving you a follow-up phone call about the information you requested online for the state life insurance programs, and I have your date of birth as 12-25-70. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. Well, I'll have you off here in a second. So we're doing everything virtually now due to the COVID, and it shouldn't take but about 10 minutes. If you wouldn't mind grabbing a pen and paper, and we'll get this out of the way. All right. You know, that might work. You, it might work, the friendly work. I think if you can be a little more direct, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us out a little bit better. And, you know, I know that's not your personality. You know, you want to be friendly and be yourself. But that if we at least we can get that first part out of the way, um, more, more serious, more commanding, more assertive, that I'm controlling the conversation, that I don't need to be friendly, we're gonna get some better results. And then as you're asking some questions and all that stuff, that's when your personality can shine. Um, but who knows, try it out. I personally think it's it's a little too friendly still. Um, and, and you sound awesome. You're a person I wanna to talk to, you sound friendly, so maybe it will work, but it has to be coming from a place of truth and confidence versus a place of neediness. And we can always read those little subtle adjustments on tone um, that makes all the difference in the world. And that's going to come with some practice too, right? So let's let's do one more time. What's your opinion on it, David? Are you still on here? Or Martina? I think, you lost David. I think she's Martina, getting what's better your opinion? With, I think she's getting better every time with, with direction. And I, I agree with what you said as far as like, the, I love your accent. Um, but, <laughs> and, and uh, quite honest, um, I sucked so bad on the phone when I first started because I door knocked at my prior 
position. So I never used the phone ever. So that was a whole new experience. And I am so bubbly. It's taking, taken a long time to erase that for me. What I do when I sit down to do phone calls, I prepare, I watch a video, I get it going, I practice a few times. And I know this is going to sound stupid, but I take my, my thumbnail and I press it so hard into my pointer finger <laughs> as a read my, I know it's stupid, but it, but it's like, I'm just, I'm going to curse. It's like, listen here, bitch, you want to make some money? You want to protect these families? You better fucking say it the way you got to fucking say it or else that ain't going to happen. All right, now go <laughs> dial. <laughs> And that helps. Sometimes we got to say that. Imagine the way you would talk to um, a ki- your, your son or your kids if they got in trouble, right? You're more direct. Look, you're going to sit down. You're going to be quiet. And this is how it's going to be. That's kind of how you want to be, right? A little more like I'm the boss. This is how it's going to go today versus like, hey, honey, you know, if you could sit down right now and be quiet, I'd really appreciate it. That'd be great, right? We want to be like, <laughs> sit down right now so we're calling this person and going you know hey i'm getting back to you on some information you requested okay this is about the state life insurance programs this is take about 10 minutes we're doing stuff virtually now grab the pen and paper and we're knock this out let me know when you're ready versus going hey hey sally how you doing hey we're doing stuff virtually now so only gonna take about 10 minutes go ahead and grab that pen and paper let me know when you're ready Okay, that purse that you're, you're going to lose a couple people on that friendly voice because they they're like, why is this guy being friendly to me? He obviously wants a commission check. You obviously want something. Now that client's in control. You're not in control. Right. So tonality is everything on the phone. And we got to keep practicing that stuff to get better. And I'm, I want to say Cassandra, great job being on the call. Julia, great job practicing, too. Because th- we don't really know until someone else hears it, right? Until we can hear some tips from other managers and stuff to get better. That's how we're going to improve. So we're going to end that call, guys. It's supposed to be two hours. Hope that was good. I want you guys to keep practicing. I promise you guys next time we're going to have some more room. We'll go through your entire scripts more um, and do some more role play. And we're going to do these every week. But um, I think it's important for us also to have some guests on that are killing it and kind of hear how they're doing it and i will upload this up to youtube and watch this thing a hundred times if you guys enjoyed this call and pick up some um some some approaches and we can see that with david doing this thing that there's a lot of different ways to do it right and his his less is more confident approach is making him a a thousand percent roi you know hey let's 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 use it too all right guys thanks for joining us we'll see you next week if you guys need individual role play know i'm here to help you guys reach out Um, reach out to Martina, reach out to anyone on the team. We're all one family here. Anyone at FFL wants you to win. And uh, let's keep pushing hard. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.